Hello people, YouTube people, whoever's watching this, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, um, I have a dream for you. Pray first. Holy Father in heaven, Yeshua, please hear my prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in you. God, I pray that you make me usable unto you and a living sacrifice unto you. God, please speak through me. And please give me or er, bless myself and all the other people that are listening with ears to hear and eyes to see. God, I pray for truth and wisdom and revelation for all your people. I pray for the broken and the lost and your blessings upon them. Please reach out and save them, Lord, as you've saved me. Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your sacrifice. I pray, I plead the pure blood of the Lamb over all those who watch this and over this video, Lord, and I pray that you make use of it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, people, um, I have a dream that I believe is from God, and um, it was on November 16th of 2016, so about four or five months ago. Um, I call it the roads crash because it was a plane crash. So I was on a large airliner, um, and it went down the ocean. I wasn't, it was like, I was already, we were sitting on top of the ocean. If any of you guys saw the uh, flight where it crashed in the Hudson rivers, but I actually ditched and landed on the water and the pilot pulled off an amazing landing. Um, that's how this was. Like the plane was fully intact and the ocean was perfectly calm. I was the co-pilot and um, I remember there being a uh, black lady with short hair that I think was the captain, but she also might have been a flight attendant because I was the only one in the cockpit, but she walked in and she had a uniform on. Um, but I don't know whether she was a captain or whether she was a flight attendant. Um, but uh, the water in the ocean was like perfectly calm. We're talking like a lake um, in the morning. If any of you guys have been on a lake in the morning when it's like like glass. And um, we were floating on top of the water. Um, the seas were calm. And I think it was just prior to sunrise, like right before the sun comes up, there's still a good amount of light. Um, she told me, she walked into the cockpit and she told me to keep the plane steady and facing, um, into the wind so that they could inflate the rafts and get people off board, like off the plane. Um, and so I did, and, um, I looked out into the perfectly calm ocean and I saw clouds begin to build, um, just as the light began to touch them from, uh, the sunrise and off in the distance. Um, all of a sudden the wind picked up and the, the wind was a strong wind from behind me. And I tried to keep the plane straight, um, with the rudder pedals. Um, and then I, uh, tried to use some aileron, which that's like, the ends of the wings um but i couldn't keep it straight and it ended up flipping the plane 180 degrees around in the ocean um into the wind and uh, i remember being kind of panicky too um by the way it was a large cockpit like i remember there being like a good amount of distance between me and that lady so i I figure it's a pretty big plane. I know there was two engines. Um, so I'm thinking like a 737 at the small end or like a 777 at the big end. Um, I then saw a wave coming at us and started to worry. Um, I began warning that the that a wave was coming, um, but I had no idea if anyone could hear me because I was in the cockpit and I know that like the mic wasn't working. Um, and uh, we ended up 
just floating over the wave. Um, and then I remember feeling really relieved. Let's see. Then I saw another larger wave coming, larger than the first, and it was steeper. And I began to warn again with more fear in my voice. We went up the front side of the wave and then went down the other. Um, but like, you know how, like we went up the one side and then as we went over the top of it, then like slammed down the fuselage and uh, made the plane shudder. And I was worried that this, about the structural integrity of the plane. I then saw a third wave coming and it was massive and steep. And I was yelling wave, wave, um, or something like that. And I was beginning to really panic. And then I was then taken outside the plane. So it's like, I was looking, I was like taken out of the cockpit and I was above the plane looking down. Um, and that's when I saw that the plane had two engines and I was thinking it was a 777, uh, because it was so large. And then I saw it get hit slash kind of go through the wave, um, partially and then then it got trapped between that wave and the the following big wave behind it and the last wave the wave that was behind it was even larger and steeper and breaking and then it break broke on the wave and sandwiched and destroyed the plane between the two um I then was like back into, I guess my body or, um, yeah, my body. And I was in the ocean just swimming around and I was in the water and I was being pushed by these huge waves and I was all by myself. I then saw land and it was like a desert land, like a desert Island and, uh, was tossed onto the land by these huge waves. And I was, I knew I was way beyond the normal beach um, because there was plants everywhere where the water was running into if you, know, you guys have been on the beach you know it's like you can tell where the water normally gets to and then um, then they'll start to be bushes and plants and I remember there being these um, kind of like cactus plants and what I would think of here is like a yucca uh, those kinds of plants and then the water receded um, I saw a two liter, liter of Mountain Dew f floating back in the ocean as I looked back out. And then I decided to jump in and go get the two liter because I knew I was in a survival situation and I didn't need any kind of nutrients I could get. Um, I then once I got out to that one, I saw a few more floating even farther out. And um, I decided to try to swim out to them, but was afraid I might get taken out to sea. As I swam out to them, I saw three other um, survivors, and they were all men. Um, and I got the other two leaders, and we all got back onto the land safely. Um, we ended up finding a village on the island, and there it, it seemed like to, it was like a vacation spot almost, or... Um, Yeah, everyone was having a good time. We found these like condos. I, that's what I'm gonna call it. Like kind of like an apartment complex or a hotel or something like that. Probably condos would be a good way to call it. And uh, um, knocking on people's doors. And we ended up finding a lady that would, um, um, she traded with us some wine. Um, for the two liters and it was cheap wine or that's what she said and then um she also gave us a place to stay and it was like she had an extra condo or something where we could stay and then she gave us clothing and then the clothing she gave us was all this like oh it's almost like these white robes um and then these weird white hats where um it's almost like if you took a bucket and put it on top of your head and it was all white, but then they came down like over your ears like this, almost like a, one of those weird ski hats. Um, that's what it looked like. And, um, 
there was like a, uh, we were all standing in there in this apartment that she let us stay in. And we were waiting until they would extend the runway on this island so that a plane could come get us. And um, as we had all this weird clothing on, one of the guys I was with, one of the survivors, joking around, like jokingly said, don't mind if I prophesy. And he had all this clothing on with these hats. Um, and pretty much throughout the dream, it was repeated. I'm saying in the spirit, I don't know. It, like I rarely hear stuff in dreams, especially like almost like a narration, but it was saying roads over and over. But I knew that it didn't mean roads like R-O-A-D. It meant roads as in R-H-O-D-E-S. Now, when I woke up, um, or after I woke up, I knew, or the only thing I knew that roads meant would be like a road scholar. Um, and so I went on the internet and I looked up roads and turns out there's an island that's in the, uh, I think it's in the Mediterranean near like Sicily and that whole area. And it's called Rhodes and it is a vacation spot. And I looked at the pictures of the island and it's like a desert island. It looked exactly like it did in the dream. So I don't know what this means. Um, I guess pray about it. If anyone has an interpretation, please let me know. Um, I tried to look up some stuff in a way of um, the kind of clothes we were wearing. And I saw some like stuff from Eastern Europe slash old Russia, like these priest clothings or priest clothing with these um, weird hats that look similar, but I couldn't find anything that looked just like it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope this helps somehow. If anyone has any uh, anything to say, feel free. Um, thanks and God bless.